Okay, so now we're going to take a look at the concept of skewness and kurtosis. Now, skewness and kurtosis sound a little scary, but they're really not. Basically, what we're looking at is the shape of the curve. So we're all familiar with a kind of bell curve that you might see here as an example. Um, this one's a little bit different, but that's okay. Uh, it still kind of has all those properties of the bell curve. Now we're using our data set from before, uh, from the previous video, so I encourage you to make sure that you've seen those. And basically what we're looking at is the skewness of the GDP, population, mortality, and score from the data set that we have. Now, if you look over to the right here, uh, it kind of explains what we're looking at in terms of skewness. If the number is negative, when we calculate the skewness, we'll basically have a very long left tail. I tried the best to draw this out as much as possible. I didn't draw the, the right-hand portion uh, completely. Um, and if the skewness is a positive number, we're going to have a longer right tail. So you'll see the hump of the bell curve a little bit more to the left side, and then it tails a long tail to the right side. And what we're looking for is numbers between 0 and negative 0.5 are somewhat symmetrical. When we get to the negative 0.5 range to 1, that's what we would call moderate. And if it's negative 1 or higher, we're going to call that a very high negative skew. And this is our negative skew. And the reverse for the positive side. So 0 to roughly 0.5, and it's a moderate positive skew. A point, I'm sorry, that's a that's a symmetrical. A 0.5 to 1 is a moderate positive skew. 1 and greater is a high positive skew. Now, the kurtosis is going to talk about the shape of that hump on that normal distribution curve. If it's flat, we call that platokurtic. Now, that kind of comes from, uh, it looks like the uh, bill of a, uh, a platypus. Uh, it's the same Greek, uh, Greek uh, prefix. If it's normal, a normal distribution, this doesn't look so normal, but it's about as close as I could make it, um, we call that mesocardic. So this would be your standard bell curve. And if we have a really high peak and very, you know, longer tails here on both sides, you know, in this narrow space in here, we call that leptocardic. When we calculate the kurtosis value, if it's uh, less than 3, that's going to be a platocardic. If it's greater than 3, it'll be leptocardic, and if it's around 3 or between in this range, it'll be mesocardic. So Excel gives us some really nice functions. It's very easy to do in Excel. Uh, to calculate the skewness, if you see here, we have our uh, skew uh, as our function, and we're going to just put it in the range of cells, D7 to D201. And if you recall from the previous examples, D kind of refers to the GDP here. Uh, if we put in that, we get a number here of 8.41. So looking at the chart that we have on our right side here, um, if it's greater than 1, which it is, it is a positive skew. And if we do the next one for population, we get the same thing. It's greater than 1, so this is a positively high skew. Uh, our mortality is also high, uh, greater than 1. Our score from the G column is no skew because it's around 0. If we look for the kurtosis, we're going to use the kurtosis or kurt uh, function. D7 to D201 again is our range, and we have a very high number here, so this is leptokurtic. We have another one here that is also leptokurtic. Um, here we have it less than 3, which is 1.55, so this is platokurtic. And again, for the score, same function, kurtosis, it's 0.41, so this is also platokurtic. So it tells you the shape of the curve and it gives you an idea. Are all the data points bunched up around the mean with a very high peak uh, to, or a very low flat hill? That's the kurtosis. And the skewness kind of talks about where the uh, hump, is it shifted a little bit to the left or to the right, or is it a nice even distribution uh, between the left tail and the right tail?